Yo, what is up guys? Loki here back at it again with another YouTube video. Today, we're gonna to be going over some early access footage from Mr. Pokey of Jane Doe. It's a pretty long one. We're probably gonna skip the Mindscape stuff just because I'm not pulling for Eidolons. I don't really care how she performs with Eidolons. If you care, I'll leave a link in the description to the original video, but our account, uh, we pulled on Chingy Banner because again, increasing your stun multiplier it, so that's just going to provide infinite value for your account the character's going to be so good sure there might be better stunners in the future but guess what the future's not here um we lost our 50 50 to lichen which is probably best case scenario because now our ellen team is perfect and ambi's still fine on our other team so now that we have a guarantee we're probably going to use our uh guarantee on jane doe just so we have an a character that can take advantage of enemies that are physically weak right um a couple things that i did did want to know and a couple concerns i did have i still think she's gonna be really good she should, should be t0 t0.5 i'm not necessarily sure probably t0 but the only issue i have with anomaly in general other than like a, like a dps character over a dps character is once you proc assault it takes you longer to proc the next assault I wish Disorder reset that internal cooldown, or not the internal cooldown, the internal um, diminishing returns, I guess. That would be really cool. That's the only issue I have. Another thing stemming from that, her Assault Anomaly can crit, right? That Assault proc can crit, meaning you can probably do like a million damage. You probably hit for hundreds of, hundreds of thousands easily. I mean, I'm hitting for hundreds of thousands with my Piper, so I'm assuming this character could probably hit for millions um another thing does she screw over future future assault physical characters or, or future anomaly physical characters because i feel like physical anomaly characters are going to have to crit in the future otherwise they're just gonna have no value because again that diminishing return issue of being able to build up the anomaly uh meter and then you know it taking longer to build up again essentially slowing down your clear right whereas characters like i mean the only downtime ellen has is this is when you build up stacks when you don't have stacks right and jian is when you don't have bullets but there are ways around that so i do wonder how a character an anomaly character will perform as opposed to like in a just a straight up attack character but we'll see whenever the character comes out i'll do my own testing um but yeah let's just get right into it Hey guys, Mr. Poki here, back with another video, and on today's episode of Early Access Review, we are finally gonna be talking about the moving wallpaper that is behind my green screen. Jane yeah, when that assault Jane builds up, an physical and enemies are just gonna die. Does tremendous assault damage because she has a oh very my unique God. ability that allows. <laughs> Look at the health bar at the top, dude. Look, my man's health bar goes to like, it goes to like right here that deals tremendous assault damage because she had boom but then well i mean it's a ching yi on this team we're at 230 percent stagger uh but so like I'm, I'm assuming a team like this is probably going to be one of her best teams um but i seth should be on her banner um so and and seth actually has a really cool play style i mean i'm a big monster hunter fan and seeing that charge blade inspiration it makes me want to pull for the character like literally i don't like his design if if he didn't have charge blade i probably wouldn't even like consider pulling for him even though he's, I'm, i kind of have to just because i'm gonna be pulling for jane doe um but yeah this is probably going to be one of her best teams. This is a very like expensive team though. So I mean, it, you're still going to get a lot of damage in having the normal um, stagger percentage, but her, you're definitely going to see way bigger like 428,000 in the back. You got 311 from the disorder proc. Disorder is probably going to be the way to go. There was a change in 1.1 that allowed disorder to stun. So 
you might not even need a stunner you know maybe if we get a character in the future like a defensive character that increases stun multiplier that would be really cool and that would be a good fit for her i don't necessarily think she has her best team yet but for right now this is this is a very strong team uh if not one of her best teams i'm sure there's other team comps will show in the future that allows assault damage to crit her damage is very very reminiscent of uh, honky starbucks super great team comp that you guys have seen from harmony trailblazer as well as firefly uh, she is not going to be relying on any sort of crit rate slash yeah, crit damage basically, so in that sense she, she doesn't does do damage a until the requirement the anomaly assault rock dps such as ellen and drew Yuan. she also has a very unique kit unlike any of the dps we've seen so far and opens up to a lot a lot of very fun team comps throughout my testings with jane Doe, right uh, as usual creator experience server is not going to be indicative of the final product you know what's crazy about that with jane Doe, right uh, as you usual creator experience you know what's crazy about that? That's a great number. That means that was resisted. I need to watch a Guoba video or something because I don't know if that matters. And it could just be because the stat, the days is 226, but that crit, that crit for two, for seven, four, 714,000. Again, this is a fully maxed out character though. So this character, isn't going to feel too good to play right out of the box you're going to have to put some investment and get that anomaly proficiency really 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 high get your um yeah you're gonna have to have like really good stats uh, and and a lot of investment this is probably i, I without um peeking forward this is probably close to maxed out um traces whatever they're called in this game um yeah, this is probably like what she looks like in 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 game, which I think the, the creator experience server is for. Experience server is not going to be indicative of the final product, as you guys have seen from what happened to King E. So, if there's any changes, do expect them to happen, right? That being said, from what I've been playing, uh, there is one specific team that has performed very very nicely compared to a lot of the other teams that I've tried. Uh, we will be discussing a play style, W engines, drive this, mindscape, and team comms. Is that her W engine? teams i've tried uh, we will be discussing a place throughout w and that's her passive what was her w engine engines drive this my okay Forty percent more anomaly buildup rate is really good. Plus, your it's anomaly fit proficiency proficiency main stat. That's really good. That's really good. We might be trying to pick that up too. Look at this money. What the? I need that. I. What? Nah. I need this. I need this. Mindscape and team comms and all of them in this video. Without further ado, let's get into today's content. Subscribe. All right, so jumping straight into Jane Doe's character kit. Passion is going to be a sort of Jane Doe's main gimmick. So in the passion state, Jane Doe's physical anomaly build up rate is increased by 25%. And if her anomaly proficiency exceeds 120, which should always be the case, uh, each point raises the attack by two up to a maximum of 600. So if your Jane Doe can somehow manage to hit 420 uh, anomaly proficiency, then you can get the full 600 attack buff on top of her current state, right? Within this passion state, Jane Doe's skill that deals damage consumes passion stream and activating a perfect dodge or defensive assist regenerates passion stream. Eventually, when all of the passion stream is going to be consumed, then she will exit the passion state right her basic attack is going to be where majority of the damage is coming from but more specifically not from the damage multipliers but from our anomaly build up rate that's right during those damage it is pretty much non-existent for both the basic skill as well as the ultimate very similar to how fireflies damage is non-existent until you actually break the target so just a jane though until you actually 
breach the assault threshold and you can trigger assault uh, her damage is extremely extremely low you're pretty much not gonna see any semblance of damage up until you trigger the assault and the reason why the basic attack is gonna be a very important for Jane though they are one of if not the highest ways of stacking on the anomaly build up rate from her basic attacks right particularly the fourth and sixth of a basic as well as the enhanced heavy attack the cell child jump right so uh that is gonna be that note that unfortunately in this game we are only gonna be able to see the damage multipliers as well as the days multipliers there's no such thing as a normally multipliers so we can only take it from uh visually how much the bar goes up per normal attack right so maybe hopefully one day we can add this in the future uh jane those heavy it will never ever be used unless the child jump is gonna be available in which you can see in the top Wait. left hand corner Unless in the future, uh, Jane those are goes up per normal attack, right? So maybe hopefully one day Mihoyo can look how fast that went up immediately, right? This enemy is probably like max level. Look how fast that went up and then it procs, right? Now look how slow it's going up. It's like taking almost double the amount of time to go up and uh proc assault again. It is in the future, probably not in the uh, Jane those heavy, yeah, still in the passion state, still in the passion state as well. It will never ever be used unless look how much longer it's taking to trigger it's almost like it's almost taking double the amount of time the child jump is going to be available in which you can see in the top left hand corner there's a little red dot that indicates the little spin spin uh, which is the sour child jump right and then once you get into jane those passion state the attacks are pretty much in a enhanced version but more or less it's the same thing jane though doesn't have any sort of like fence like she's definitely gonna feel a lot better with her weapon her weapon's gonna make her feel a lot better for sure the combos kara cancelling skill into basic into skill it is simply just basic 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 followed by more basic extremely extremely straightforward kit uh she's not able to animation cancel because for example if you were to use basic attack uh, and then use a skill in the middle of a basic animations it's gonna reset all the way back to one and ideally that's not the case so for jane though you want to try to finish the entire six basic attack chains and then do something else and then talking about jane those skill clear out you will only ever use this if you have the ex which is going to be 60 energy otherwise you're pretty much never ever going to be using this because it stacks normally extremely extremely slowly now at of this point i will talk about basically when should you be using jane those skill as well as style child jump think of jane though like jing liu you would never or rather very rarely would you ever use jing liu's skill and ultimate unless she's already in the enhanced state this is exactly the same for jane though you will almost never ever use your skill or sao chao jump unless you're already in the passion state because that is when you will deal a lot more physical normally build up uh, which can allow us to hit the uh, assault threshold much much higher not to mention deal more damage and the Very reason why it's exactly to play, is because then. both the enhanced skill as well as sao chao jump they can be used to build passion as well which means that you can in fact use these skills and sao chao jump to make jane do enter into passion state faster most of the situation i've realized that this was a net dps loss i'm just going to be saving it to the core skills right but before we go into that jane Doe's dodge counter as well as parry uh jane Doe is the only unit we have in the entire game that has a built-in triple dodge system she's the only unit that can press dodge three times consecutively which means that it is extremely extremely easy and comfortable to use jane Doe against higher pressure situations such as as you guys have seen the rampant route in disputed no right so very very nice keep in mind dodge counter it also increases our passion in or out of the passion state so dodge counter is going to be a very very integral part of jane Doe's kit when it comes to not only maintaining herself within passion state as well as it comes to dealing the anomaly build rate to trigger assault right you can say that against an enemy that is more aggressive such as the rampant brute jane Doe's dps actually goes up the more you dodge with jane Doe, or the more targets you dodge with jane Doe, or uh, the faster you can stack on this passion state or maintain herself within passion state keep in mind these dodges they also increase the amount of passion gained from the number of attacks she's facing so if you're gonna be you know a game where there's two mobs or three mobs now that the same i'm like time. watching this um you're dealing damage outside of, of uh days so it doesn't necessarily matter if it takes longer to build the anomaly because because if it if, if it didn't it would be pretty op because you're actually dealing pretty good damage regardless of whether the enemy's debuffed whether the enemy's like stunned like you're doing pretty decent damage right and then obviously you're going to do more when they're stunned and you have a stun multiplier um 
I'm not trying to be like super negative, but like, what if you've built up so much assault that by the time you stun the enemy, you can't get the meter to hit to trigger assault again because you've you've already built it up so or you built it up so many times there's like diminishing returns i don't know me i just worry about stuff like that but i guess that's fine um yeah she seems pretty good because that's definitely something i i didn't like think about too too much like you're like look at this entire phase right here right like look at this constantly triggering assault boom damage pretty good damage triggering again boom oh this is that this is that annoying floor boom good damage like you're constantly weaving in and out like she's she's gonna handle these like double fights right and then basically staggering them it's just a, it's just a caveat honestly because it, it, it's gonna net you more damage and then it's, it's gonna basically by, by the time they're stunned if you trigger assault one more time during that stun i'm assuming this the assault does is multiplied by the stun i actually don't know i don't know too much about anomaly characters honestly um but if it is multiplied then that next assault proc or disorder proc should kill it should kill <laughs> depending on like how fast you stun them but yeah like i said look at this everything's every all the traces are extremely high and then everything's maxed so this is this is what an end game jane doe is gonna look like as well as the normal pressure state there's not too much of a difference more or less the same multipliers you are pretty much always going to be using this whenever the opportunity arises so that's going to be dead uh, yeah and finally for jane Doe's ultimate final curtain it instantly refreshes passion to the maximum and it gives us one stack of Dao Chao Jump. Now, unlike other DPSs like you've seen from uh, like Alan and Chu Yuan, Jane Do is one of the only DPS which I personally found that you want to try and use this ultimate towards the end of the stun window. This um, the only thing I have to say with about that is Ellen, her animations are so slow that you want to use her, like her ultimate animation is super slow. That you want to use her ultimate at the beginning of the st of the enemy's days phase zhu yan it literally doesn't matter it, it like sh she shoots her gun and all the damage comes out within like probably a second like probably less than a second it comes out really fast so like depending on the situation you can save your zhu yan alt to the end of the phase of the damage phase but um jane doe more more often than not, you want to save it towards the end. Yeah, I can see why. This refreshes your passion state from zero or from one all the way to full again. And the name of the game, Jane Doe, is to try and stay in this passion state for as long as humanly possible. So if you just finished up your chain attacks and your passion state is at full bar, using ultimate here is a little bit counterintuitive because the moment you exit out of passion state, once the day's window is closed, then Jane Doe will have to restart building herself with the pressure state all over again. Uh, the actual damage from Jane Doe's ultimate honestly is pretty low. And like I mentioned, Jane Doe's kit, it is not relying on the damage multipliers at all. She's pretty much only going to be relying on the assault that can crit, right? So that's going to be that. Now, jumping into Jane Doe's core skill, and I also want to take this opportunity to briefly touch on, on what exactly uh, does Jane Doe do. So the name of the game with Jane Doe staying in this passion state for as long as humanly possible. The moment Jane Doe exits passion state, her damage falls off by quite a considerable amount. Not completely, because we can still trigger assault even when we're not in the passion state. There are a few ways that Jane Doe can do uh, to go back into passion state again. Number one, use the ultimate. Very straightforward. And like I mentioned, you want to try to use the ultimate towards the end of the day's window in order to get the maximum art time as possible, right? But number two, you can basically use your basic attacks, Bro. skill, etc. <laughs> to kind of Bro, Seth's kit is so cool. Like, I, I do not like that character's design, like, at all. But if, if it... As, like, a big Monster Hunter guy, I love Seth's, like, like kit. It, it, it's so cool. The, the the whole charge blade play style like i love it i i absolutely love it like holy like i probably i haven't played a lot of charge blade in monster hunter but i appreciate it and i've seen a lot of like 
team dark side speed runs etc etc but seeing that in this game and then again for, this is a tangent complete tangent but seeing caesar with sword and shield is a wild i i can only imagine the implications i know her gameplay it exists on the internet but again subject to change right so like i whenever she's released in the game or whenever they officially show it then i'll react to it but it's it's so cool seth is actually a character that i actually do really really want to play and then again defense characters can actually be used to uh build up days for you so it's really cool very very cool options that they have refresh our passion state but keep in mind if we use our skill during the passion state window which should be the case uh the passion actually goes down instead of going up uh you are basically expanding the passion you want to do more damage with your ex skill right so through my testing i've realized that this is not a very efficient way of getting jane doe into the passion state it does take quite a bit to rely solely on jane doe's basic attacks as well as skill get back into passion state again and if we were to use jane doe's skill then we can't use skill during the passion state itself right so same thing for sao chao jump as well if you're using sao chao jump outside of passion state um it is a net dps loss because you want to use this during passion state since it does increase the bar when you are already in this state right which brings us to the final way of maintaining jane doe in passion state chain attacks the moment the enemy is dazed and you chain attack into jane doe she will instantly replenish passion state to full as well as getting one proc of now chow jump so these three ways led me to my thought process of playing jane doe and it made me realize that jane doe as a unit performs exceedingly well the faster the enemy reached base window not only does it refresh our pressure state completely it also allows our actual assault to deal way more damage because stun damage multiplier it, it also affects our assault damage and since okay so that answers my question it actually does because i don't play a lot with anomaly characters i'm assuming okay so that that like alleviates a bit of my worries because she's doing pretty decent damage regardless of the enemy stunned right no other character this is like where anomaly characters shine over just like normal attack characters they're, they're doing pretty i mean attack characters are doing pretty good damage as well but obviously every character in the game is going to benefit from the enemy being dazed um we went over this before in a previous video it's 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 that same stagger um mechanic adopted from final fantasy 7 remake or, or rebirth right um that is where you want to proc all your alts you want to get all your chain attacks in that is w where the meat of your damage is going to be um during that stagger state or the day state they call it in this game so yeah it it, it, it is really cool that i mean it I, it kind of just goes without being said that you want to stun the enemy as, as quick as possible <laughs> like i feel like that's always the situation whenever you're going against like bosses but um i digress jane Doe's single assault crit is already has such a massive massive multiplier during these assault crits within the days windows will significantly boost our overall dps i found myself using a days with jane Doe extremely extremely comfortable that means that she is definitely not restricted to only using days teams and i'm gonna be talking about this a little bit more in the team conversation right so anyways back to what i was saying the core skill now the not state is going to be applied by any of jane Doe's attack that lasting for 10 seconds and this not state will have two different effects any assault triggered during the enemy's not state will have two things first of all your flinch extends by five seconds and this is extremely extreme beneficial for stacking on our days as soon as possible even for non days teams and in case you guys forgot flinch and assault they are both basically effects within the physical anomaly right assault is just this very big chunk of physical damage as well as interrupting the enemy action while flinch will increase the days that the target receives for a certain period of time so getting this flinch extended by five seconds it allows jindo to still break the target even if you're not going to be running a days unit and if you are running a days unit then this will break even faster right another effect which is pretty much the bread and butter of jane Doe's entire game and why her damage is absolutely ridiculous is gonna be the fact that assault can crit 
at a 40% crit rate slash 50% crit damage. These crit rate skills are by 0.16% uh, per anomaly proficiency, which basically means at 375% anomaly proficiency, you will get 100% crit rate. Uh, this number might seem pretty daunting at first. If you're going to be running Jane Doe with Steph, which gives us another 100 anomaly proficiency, which means more or less if you do have the main stats mm. done as well as some of the subsets, Mmm, okay. When Seth uses EX special attack, Thunder Shield Rush, high voltage, he gains a shield. Okay, we we know about that. Um is this gonna be triggered once every 10 seconds? A shield of firm resolve grants a 100 point increase to anomaly proficiency. So as long as you have that shield from Seth on your squad, you have an, an extra 100 percent anomaly proficiency. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's not not too bad. That's definitely achievable. So Seth is a very good teammate for her, and I guess it kind of makes sense considering what happened with him in the story. You should be able to easily hit 325% anomaly proficiency uh, in battle, right? Although this assault crit, it can be triggered by any squad member. Jane though ideally wants to be the only one blocking assault due to how anomaly works. Now, like I mentioned in my previous anomaly videos and how the damage volume works in Xenon Zone Zero, if two allies are in the same element, so in this case, if two allies are physical, let's just for example say Piper, final assault damage will be split based on who contributed towards this final assault. Which means if 50% of the assault buildup, the physical anomaly buildup, is contributed by Jane Doe, whereas the other 50% is contributed by Piper, uh, then it will be a mix of 50% of Jane Doe's anomaly proficiency and 50% of Piper's anomaly proficiency that makes so much sense i actually didn't watch that video that makes so much sense that makes so much there was a team i was testing a while back it, it was it was it was a little awkward um it was a piper uh corin team and it makes sense why the damage was so like inconsistent unless though unless this was a change in 1.1 and i'm just like waffling but that actually makes so much sense okay so i see why he's running the team that she's running or that he's running but i mean i guess Chingy kind of fits on any on any team but i'm sure you could put like a lot of other units in her place as well and then maybe he'll go over that in the future uh combine into one for the final assault hit and since Jane Doe's kit herself she does way 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 more anomaly damage it will unfortunately dilute the final assault damage even though anyone can trigger this crit right so do take that into consideration uh when you are going to be thinking of running a jingle with another physical unit now one more thing which is going to be the additional ability that sore spot crucial 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 very good because it does give us 20 percent anomaly build rate which is pretty much similar to hong uh, brave agency in hongi starbucks if the target is already suffering from anomaly then this goes up to 35 percent which is where this whole disorder team com comes into play if we apply a debuff such as Later. shock or burn then we can trigger this physical anomaly build up to assault uh, at a 15 percent higher anomaly build up rate so that is pretty much jane those character kit and i want to jump into exactly how do we play jane though it was a later portion but before we get into that i just want to touch on the w engine as well the drive disc option okay. now for jane though her w engine is very reminiscent of ellen's w engine which is the next best installed substitute uh it does fall by quite a considerable amount if you want to compare it to the signature weapon in this case it's going to be the sharpened stinger upon activating a dash that gains one stack of predatory instinct up to three stacks each stack increasing physical damage by 12 percent and if we do a perfect dodge and you will instantly gain three stacks upon reaching three stacks our anomaly build up rate increases by 40 percent this is the only W engine in the entire game that has a buff to anomaly build up rate, which is pretty much equivalent to buffing a break efficiency in Honky Starbucks. Another measure, it also gives a whopping 90 anomaly proficiency as the main stat for this weapon, right? Sharpen Stinger is going to be an extremely, extremely powerful W engine if you are going to be thinking of pulling for Jane though. And all of the other W engines, it kind of pales in comparison, not because they don't have attack, don't have pen ratio, don't have anomaly proficiency, right? Because they do, but it's because none of the other W engines we have have access to a normally build up rate especially a normally build up rate at 40 percent right so this is also pretty much the most important part of jane's entire kit because it's not like she's lacking a normally proficiency so that's probably gonna be your second best in slot which is piper's weapon right the roaring ride that's piper's weapon i believe um i think i have that at like m i don't know what they call it in this game i think i have it at like s3 or something but 
So yeah, she really... Marshall doesn't have as many hits. Hard to be consistent. Yeah. Mm, she's a character that really, really wants her weapon. Interesting. Interesting. It would suck to pull the character and then lose a 75-25 immediately after. That would really suck. <laughs> that would actually just be horrible. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to be how fast... Her, her W engine is going to essentially, like her value is going to increase significantly when you have it. You're going to trigger those assaults faster, um, usually in like a one combo and having to trigger it in multiple combos is it, 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 it gets slightly annoying because enemies degroup, they move around, they get their attacks off. The faster you're able to trigger it, the easier of a time you're going to have, right? Like the faster you're able to kill an enemy, the less bullshit you have to deal with. It just kind of goes without saying. But yeah, this makes sense. Four piece physical, two piece anomaly. Yeah, this is essentially what's on my Piper. There's two. 35% additional damage for 12 seconds. I personally feel it's not that crazy. The reason why is because Jane Doe, like I mentioned, her damage output is not going to be tied to any of her other kids, like her ultimate skill or basic attacks. Pretty much, in my opinion, 90% of Jane Doe's damage output is going to be coming from the actual assault i would much rather trigger assaults more frequently instead of getting this 35 percent additional damage uh on basic skill ultimate which jane Doe personally doesn't do that much of that's why four piece freedom boost in my opinion i think is probably a little bit better because when our ESP attack hits an enemy it reduces a non without rest to the attribute by 20 percent for eight seconds and it does not stack with others of the same attribute so it does pretty much allow our jane Doe to uh reach the assault at a much faster pace i thought of using freedom blues with a uh, secondary support unit such as seth or such as lucy such as grace but unfortunately because this is only going to be tied to the equipper's attribute so unfortunately until we get a physical support for jane though then this four piece freedom blues is not going to be able to be used on our other supports our slot four and six is definitely fixed anomaly proficiency anomaly mastery no questions asked 100 percent but our slot yeah. five is a little bit more dependent on subsets 10 attack percentage physical damage they're all pretty decent i would say that between these attack is definitely going to be the weakest one because jane does have access to up to 600 attack buff during her passion state right and this is 600 flat attack so jane doesn't really need that much attack percentage so between yep. pen ratio as well as physical damage you kind of want to see what you're getting at if you have a lot of pen stop stats if you're going to be running jane with rena then pen main stat might scale pretty well otherwise you can't really go wrong with physical damage percentage but at the end of the day the difference in slot fight is not that impactful just go for the one with the better substance and speaking of subsets jane though you pretty much just want anomaly proficiency over pen ratio or attack percentage uh there is unfortunately no anomaly mastery in our subset so anomaly proficiency is the only one that can directly increase jane Doe's damage by yeah. the highest amount that pen and attack sense. percentage are all pretty decent subsets everything else it would not impact jane Doe whatsoever right okay we're gonna skip the mindscape part as i said we don't really care about pulling for eidolons if you do that will be there in the description for you guys to uh check that out but let's check out the key findings part of the video. Downtime when you're running her, which is the downtime where Jindo is not in the passion state. So to yeah, fix do do? this downtime, you either run another Dazer to trigger change as soon as possible, or you just swap into another anomaly unit like Grace or even Rina to kind of apply our debuffs, apply our shocks, and use this downtime to kind of stack on all of the other anomalies and then swap back into Jane Doe again. So, and I have found, as you guys have seen from all of the video playbacks, uh, Ching Yi's clear speed is absolutely the fastest compared to all of the things that have tested with Ching Yi, with cleared out with Grace. Uh, very, very nice, very, very good. And this is the only team that I have so far that actually achieved a 1 million damage assault crit. So, absolutely insane team. And in my opinion, will be Jane Doe's been slow. Unfortunately, I mean, it's just unfortunate that like Ching Yi's now and then Jane goes after, but it, it again, it kind of goes without being said just because um, Ching Yi increases the day's multiplier by so much that obviously you're going to hit bigger numbers than with any other character in the game, but I get it. I do understand why this has to be said because there's only one team in the game if you still want to play Zhu Yuan uh, Zhu Yuan's Ben is definitely going to be Qing Yi so if you don't have Qing Yi available to spare for Jane Do feel free to use a Koleida or if you don't have Koleida feel free to run NB run Lycon I think they're all pretty much more than safe you just want to base target as soon as you possible and then at this point we can kind of talk about the other team comp and that is gonna be the uh, anomaly team comp so we don't run a Dazer we either run a support like Grace 
Lucy, Rina, all that. And upon reaching anomaly, and you he guys said around what? 10 seconds Lucy, slower than she Rina, all that. That's and still upon fast. Upon reaching anomaly, and you guys have known from a previous uh, Jano's core skill, you do get up to 35% additional anomaly build up rest penetration, which means you can stack on physical anomaly assault much faster. So there's also another way to go. Jane Doe's slot too, which means you really secure Jane Doe. You secure either you want to play Days or the Anomaly. The final slot is going to be Seth. I'm going to be talking about this more in his own personal C server video. Every other unit, even though they can buff, you know, Nicole has the defense shred. We're just going to ignore the fact that, uh, <laughs> that uh, Grace's hair was glowing there, which means her signature weapons on, or she has the, or, or the effect is, is ticked on. But, um... Okay, so like I have a M1. Oh, dude, if I got M2, that might be kind of cooked. Hold on, I have M1 Grace. Um, I don't really use my Grace like that. Like, like my Grace isn't built like that. I used her a lot when I, cause I mean, that was like all I had. But I'm mostly just using my Gion, my Ellen teams now. Um, Grace is an interesting one. We'll see. We'll see how the next few days go. Maybe we'll continue to keep pulling on the on the Ching Yu banner and see what happens. I don't know. Maybe we'll because I'm close to a five star in the standard banner as well. Maybe we'll get Kaleida. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but we do have Lycan now. We can just run Lycan as well and just and just hopefully pull Sass. But I like four stars in this game is only like two right it's only it's only two per banner so we should theoretically get a sack um hopefully a few copies i'm not sure how much his value goes up uh depending on his mindscapes but i'm sure we'll find that out in the future red we said the tab off they are not as direct as compared to seth and let's just be real, Seth's playstyle is extremely, extremely cool with the charge rate and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but more than the Seth's video, but just on Jindo, this is where I kind of formulate, in my opinion, the best in slot team comp options for Jindo. Jindo, King E, Seth. If they have King E, run Kureda. If they have Kureda, run any of the days that you want. If you want to run a, a normal build-up team, do expect yourself to clear a little bit slower, but I find myself having decent success running Jindo with Grace or Seth. And when it comes to Jindo's pooling value, in my opinion, I think she's extremely, extremely fun. Uh, her damage is extremely, extremely high. So far, there hasn't been an end content that can kind of contest with Jane Doe's absolutely ridiculous assault normally damage multipliers. Xenoblade Zone Zero, it's all about Shogun. It is all about the feeling of playing a kid. And for me personally, I found myself uh, clicking with Jane Doe very, very quickly. Just on how comfortable this kid is, how much damage she's dealing, and how flexible she is. You can run with days, you can run with anomaly. Uh, I'm pretty sure when, you know, future units comes out, like Bernice, which is fire anomaly, or you can run like a disorder team, all kind of stuff. So the potential is pretty limitless for Jindo. As long as the baseline is there, which is the physical assault critting, her damage won't go anywhere. You can make this a lot higher by running the absolute best dot team comp. You can make this a little bit less optimal, but you can still clear off the stages. So in my opinion, Jindo is a very, very good pool for an account. And with that, we have come to the end of Jane Doe's early access review. Uh, World of the Day is going to be, you know, you know what? Red. Classic. All right, join Twitch, join YouTube, join Discord. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also, specifically for Jane Doe, let me know what you guys want to test. Because I think this character, especially when it comes to the team complexion, uh, there's a lot, a lot of potential to be cooked over here. Unfortunately, I don't really have enough time due to Black Myth, due to Genshin, all that kind of stuff. So I couldn't really test out every single one of Jindo team comp but this is pretty much the best i found so far right so look forward to our actual release or if you guys want more videos about the c server in the next week let me know as well uh, it does seem like they allowed mr Proki to be more of himself in this video and give his own like actual opinions rather than having to uh be corpo pokey so i think i actually believe everything he said uh, so i'm probably gonna try to pull for the character with their guarantee Hopefully we get enough pulls. Hopefully we get her early and then we're able to get the we're able to snipe the W engine as well. But let me know what you guys think about the character down in the comment section. I know a lot of you really like the character uh for more reasons than just her high assault damage. But yeah, we're gonna be pulling for her. Um we're gonna be trying out every possible team comp that I can. So maybe look for some Jane Doe content on my end in the coming weeks whenever the character does release. But yeah, tier list coming soon and I like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.